So here today with uh, Matt Keel of uh, CEB. Matt's been talking to the uh, Cranfield uh, Key Account Management Best Practice Club about the uh, the Challenger sale, a big piece of uh, probably the biggest piece of recent research in uh, sales. Uh, and uh, Matt uh, Matt talked. I wonder if Matt, if you just give us a quick overview of uh, the Challenger sale, and particularly the five types that you find as uh, prevalent sales sure. types. Um, <laughs> A lot of research have gone into this over the years. Um, I guess where all of this started, uh, to kind of take it back a few years, is this idea of you know, the way that customers are buying today has changed. Now we know that customers really value uh, a great sales experience. In fact, we kind of now have data to back that up. But it raised the question, what kind of salesperson can actually go out and deliver that great experience? Uh, and it took us down this, this path we've been on now for a few years. Um, all told, I think we've surveyed well north of 40,000 salespeople, global, hundreds of companies. It is just a massive data set. But we, we have three big interesting findings. And you're right, the first, turns out when you look at behaviors, what someone actually does when they sit in front of the customer, turns out there are really five behavior sets that salespeople tend to fall into. Now first you have a hard worker, right? It's someone who uh, you just kind of put a brick wall in front of them, they just run at it to get through. They're all about achieving their targets, whatever it takes. And you have a challenger, someone who is all about the, the debating, the new perspective, like pushing back. Uh, you have someone who's a bit of a relationship builder, who at their core is about, let's make it fun and easy, let's get along, be generous with our time. Whatever you need, I'm your guy or gal. Right? Uh, you have a, a lone wolf, someone who maybe euphemistically is a bit of a pain sometimes, but, but also they're the person who really wants to do it independently. You know, my way, I don't need your process. Uh, and you know, we tolerate them as long as they're doing the numbers, but sometimes it's a, a bit difficult. And then lastly, you have the problem solver, someone who is uh, at their core about resolving any issues. You see them very much in post-sale service. And, and you know, those in some are kind of the five approaches that we see salespeople engage in. Um, but I think it's important to keep in mind that no one fits into these, it's not square pegs and round holes, right? It's not about just saying you are this and not that. It, you can bleed across the lines. You see salespeople do all those things well. It just becomes a matter of where they really gravitate. What's their core approach to a customer? And really fascinating findings. You find that Challenger wins in the end in terms of the highest amount of high performers fall into that bucket, has huge implications for ultimately how you think about teaching your people, training them, how you think about approaching customers, all kinds of organizational implications. And that's, that's I think, the real meat of the story at the end of the day. Yeah. I, I guess the clue's in the title of the book and uh, the research and the <laughs> yeah, challenge yeah. sale wins through. Uh, I did, I paid a lot of attention this morning. So let me, let me ask you a challenging, uh, a challenging question then. So uh, you've been doing this for some time now and uh, working with organizations. What would you say is kind of the uh, single or the top couple of things that Organizations who want to uh, ad adopt the challenge of sale, what are the biggest challenges they have to, uh, to make it work? Yeah, it's a, it's a big question. I think, you know, at the end of the day, companies who start to go down this path, it's similar to any other change initiative, right? You're going to have to get people on board. You're going to have to make sure that people first understand that there is a different approach and get them on board that they want to change. A lot of that comes down through senior leader communications and sponsorship and signal value. A lot of it comes down through reinforcement with your frontline managers. I mean, it's just kind of shocking how many different people really have to be on board to affect a change at the front line. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a first piece that's an awareness piece. I think the next real trouble that we run into is um, do people really go out and live the new approach? Do they go out and try it? Do they engage with, OK, I'm going to deliver new insight to my customer. Uh, and maybe it's going to be a little bit hard. Maybe it's going to be tough. Maybe, uh, maybe this situation was different than I expected it to be. So how do you kind of work through those initial yeah. challenges? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you kind of get down this road of longer organizational behavior change, where it's not just a story about salespeople. It's a story about, is marketing on board with surfacing and providing these insights in a scalable way? Is, is your insight and research and product team really thinking about what does our customer do at the end of the day? What do they really use us for? And how do we uniquely connect? So it becomes very early on, I think, a much uh, bigger story. 
uh, and organizations that um, grapple with that a little bit. You know, or, or it's hard to get everybody on the same page. It's hard to get the right stakeholders involved. The journey takes a little bit longer. Um, but I think that's really the, the key takeaway is you know, Challenger is not about salespeople. I mean, that's where the research started. It was all about data on salespeople. Yeah. It's really actually much more about what your customer is forcing you as a company to do. Yeah. And you need to react to how your customers have changed their purchase. And that requires a lot more activity and a lot more focus across the business. Those are the big challenges okay. that companies face. Thanks, Matt. Matt it was a, it's a great piece of uh, piece of work, and it was uh, you delivered it with a real uh, high impact and energy. So Thank uh, many thanks for the uh, Crownfield and the Cam Club. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks, Mark. Take care.